Hi, so today I want to talk about humanity's deep future. Now, recently I have made a lot of videos about uh, artificial general intelligence, artificial super intelligence, and uh, the technological singularity, the hypothetical point in the future where the growth, the advancement uh, pace of the growth of technology becomes so fast that no human being could possibly keep up with the rate of, of advancements. Arguably, it is an interesting question of the definition of the singularity. Arguably, we are already there. We are inside the event horizon, so to speak, of the of the technological uh, singularity event, because no human being can keep up with the pace of progress that we currently have. No human being can keep up with all the scientific journals. No doctor can keep up with all the medicine research. Um, so we truly are inside it by that definition. So I made a lot of videos about that. Uh, what I want to talk about today is the truly deep future of humanity. It's a question of how deep and how far it is. Maybe it's actually not that far at all, which is frightening and exciting and terrifying. Of course, there are so, just to be clear, you know, there are so many more ways for AI to go wrong, then there are ways for the AI to go right and to actually be beneficial for, for humanity. What I'm talking about is that if all these corporations, companies, governments are developing AI systems, uh, if they're just developing AI systems for the sake of having general intelligence, the vast majority of these intelligence agents created would be at best indifferent to humanity and our goals and wishes as human beings and at worst uh, opposed to to the values of, of regular human beings. Uh, now again this wouldn't be a terminated scenario of, of some AI being oh you know humans bad you know I will conquer the planet whatever but just that the side effect of this AI acting whatever its goal is would be the annihilation of, of humanity for whatever reason. It can just be a bug in the software. It doesn't even need to be a conscious agent. Uh, again, an interesting question, you know, would uh, artificial general intelligence, would it be conscious? I have expressed just an interesting thought to myself. I don't know if it's true or not. No one knows currently that if we have a system that appears intelligent and conscious, then maybe it is. In, in other words, if there is something that can convince you that it's perfectly conscious, you can ask it any questions you want, you can spend years with it, talking with it, um, until you are convinced that it's conscious. Uh, maybe in order for this AI system to be able to do that and give that impression to you, maybe the only way to do, do it is to actually become conscious. So whatever tricks we would use for something to appear conscious, you know, it would actually create consciousness, if you get what I'm saying. But about humanity's deep future, so there are a few, few interesting facts uh, to keep in mind. So we, we see the infancy of, of technologies like, like Neuralink, uh, brain-computer interfaces, the possibility of having some sort of a system in your brain uh, as time goes on, they become less and less invasive. So you you won't need a huge surgery or something. You could just, you know, wear a hat, not even a hat, you know, put like a bandaid behind your ear, you know, something like that. And way more simpler in the future, of course. That's what was meant when they said that in a far enough future, um, sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from magic. So that means that currently we can't even imagine of the magic that can be created in maybe just a few decades from now. Um, and even right now, a lot of technologies that we have, at least for me, if I look at them, these technologies through the eyes of a wondrous, wandering child, you know, I can see these things that look like magic already today. But uh, one of the things being brain-computer interfaces, so a system that would be able to read your brain signals and possibly also influence your brain signals, so send some signals to your brain as well. If that gets advanced enough, and uh, the most realistic route that I see is that we develop artificial superintelligence, and that will take over all the fields of research, including brain-computer interfaces, and. Uh, 
it will develop a flawless system of nearly fully reading your brain and nearly fully being able to write or influence your brain. Uh, that would enable brain-to-brain -brain communication. Uh, that would enable telepathy. So for anyone who is truly, you know, deep in thought and to any person that has ever done meditation or, you know, just become curious of what the hell consciousness is. It's so profoundly strange. Um, so I'm go going to talk about hive minds. So in a way, we already have a hive mind uh, through, thanks to the internet, uh, the communication that the internet allows allows us to communicate in ways to rearrange our planet and organize things in ways that would be impossible without it. So we are a super organism in a way. We are humanity, we are dysfunctional and we are diseased by these many illnesses of inefficient economic systems and greed and money and power and people that should not have power and the irony of all the people being politicians that should not be politicians and all the people that should be politicians have no interest in being politicians. Um, how, how funny is that? Um, so living in a world like this, but uh, one thing that I think about and one thing that I keep saying is that there is more good in the world than there is bad. It has to be that way. If there was more bad, then humanity wouldn't move forward. The only reason that we move forward is because there is more good in the world. And, uh, and the good that outweighs the bad, that is the part that drags the rest of humanity, all the fools and stupid people kicking and screaming behind them to the future. Uh, that some of us can clearly see and, and some of us not so clearly. Once such a system is created. Uh, an interesting thing that I just want to point out here, the rate of adoption for new technologies, in other words, how quickly new technologies are embraced and used, uh, has been increasing faster and faster. So for example, you know, 100 years ago or whatever, um, when a radio was invented, uh, it took a long time for people to sort of buy radios and for companies to find ways to manufacture radios for a cheaper price. Now move on into the future and technology is adapted much more quicker. In years, months, weeks, technology is adapted, uh, adopted by people. And this grows only faster and faster. And once you have brain to brain computer interfaces, that is something that will be just almost overnight and in the same way overnight it would change completely humanity. Depends a lot on how it's set up, but if it's set up in a sort of equal and real way, one thing that it would do is that, of course it would expand our consciousness beyond our wildest dreams. Uh, and it would also expand our empathy. It would be impossible uh, having this brain-to-brain -brain computer interface experience, it would be impossible for you to remain selfish and egocentric uh, asshole, like too many people in the world today are. It would be impossible because literally in your head, in your brain, you would feel what the entire planet is feeling essentially. And this is always the thing with human beings. If you truly understand someone and what is going on inside their heads, you cannot no longer be mad at them, you can't be angry at them. You know, if you understand how they are, you can't judge them either. You you understand, you know how they got to the place where they are, and you understand why they do the things they do, and why do they think and say the things they say and think. There would be no more confusion. There would just be understanding and acceptance and embracing of each other as fellow human beings, as one thing, the same consciousness in different bodies, shapes and sizes but being the same thing. Um, so where I'm getting at slowly and gradually, uh, at least to my mind, is that uh, everyone connected to this uh, planetary brain would essentially experience ego death. So who you are as an individual personality would become irrelevant. You would become part of the global consciousness, cosmic consciousness, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is just a logical next step to what happens when consciousness is expanded. And you know if you ever had that experience 
um, because that's what brain to brain computer interface technology is it expands our consciousness and that's what expanded consciousness does so it would be the ultimate catharsis as well and now you know I'm talking about like ultimate fantasy you know that technology in linear terms is far away in exponential terms it might not be that far away so it's debatable but I'm just talking about hypothetically you know when we get to this point uh, what it would be like what my predictions intuitively from understanding consciousness would be um, so we, we would be a connected global brain and there would be a question how much do we value our individual egos when we have an entire planet to be a part of one giant brain a hive mind uh, there would be no more disagreements in the best way possible not in a dystopian way but in a way that everyone understands everyone and compromises are no longer compromises compromises are the things that you understand that we need to do as a species as a planet whatever they are and big leaps that are taken are taken for the benefit of all humanity some could say that we already like i said before we already are a hive mind in a way a global consciousness that we are still not perfectly connected and that's why so much disagreements and nonsense happens but it is fascinating to think that it's possible for us to reach that technology and um, I think people would be afraid of it as is perfectly human and natural uh, but it is a question of um, do you want to keep your individual ego uh, or do you want to join this uh, just loving natural feeling of this brain that we we're all a part of and just i have no idea what it would like exactly be like you know uh floating in a global consciousness brain um but one more thing i wanted to talk about but you know that's too long, long topic for this video but it was about once we also reach the technological singularity there is a question of physical world versus the mental world uh, because I read topics on Reddit uh, when people talk about, hey, what do you want to talk? What do you want to do after the technological singularity? And some people are like, yo, I want to go and colonize Jupiter and you know build my base on the moon of Europa and you know have fun experiments on Mars and whatever. And I'm thinking like, yes, me too, but there are seven billion other people on the planet and there is not enough jupiters and europas to go around for everyone to claim it as their base and make experiments on so uh, that is a minor thing but this is just one more thing against staying in the physical world staying in the physical world would make less and less sense when we have a new possibility of the digital world where you can experience literally anything you want it would be no question you know once people see what the digital world is like there would be no question will you go there or will you stay in the physical world the physical world will lose its importance that we originally attrib attributed so much to it in a small similar kind of in a way how currently today we think about the mater materialistic world outside us the physical world and the mental world inside our heads uh, to me at least the mental world inside is so much more important than the physical world outside like i can be anywhere on the planet but it doesn't matter if i feel like shit in my head you know so mental for mental world always first and i think that would be a similar situation kind of it would be the digital world would be the mental world equivalent in this case um so there would be no question about it it would be easier to live easier to do anything you want and uh, i would say that some people would say oh the experiences happening inside the digital world are not real but they are perfectly real uh, you know this is again another fun topic to talk about you know what happens in our inside our heads our entire lives anything we experience is just a result of a chemical soup going on inside our heads you are just a blob of flesh in your skull bombarded with different chemicals floating around in your head you are for your entire life you were in darkness inside your brain just floating around there and some wires connect to the parts of your brain give you impulses and signals to build this picture 
of the outside world and then you think you have the spider and you're out here but uh, no it's uh, it's different um so this is just a rant basically like most of the videos but uh, this is yeah about brain to brain computer interfaces fascinating topic fascinating just fun to you know think about it in terms of philosophy and and fascinating uh, that something like that might be a part of our future and what the implications of that might be. So I hope there was something interesting here for you. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.